Well, at, at this time, let me say a special good afternoon to Patrice. Thank you so very much for being with us another week, another Monday. Well, how was your weekend, Patrice? How were you doing? It was good. Saturday was a little rough. Um, I have no idea why my sign was just decided to act up. And that could be a little tough when you're meeting with clients. So I have to actually wear a mask. <laughs> oh, sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear but that. I mean, but I mean, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's amazing how God gives us the grace. And I think sometimes we don't tap into it so that we go into stuff. It is tough, yes, but he gives, and grace is divine empowerment. So I knew yeah. he gave me grace on Saturday, and I'm always grateful, through. yeah, for his grace, which Amen. far supersedes what I would have been able to, to do, even with my well self, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's how he shows up and shows off. <laughs> yes, yeah, definitely, yeah. All right, so what are we dealing with today, Patrick? So continuing, we're continuing with um self-awareness. So we're doing part two, which has to do with what are the behaviors that indicate a lack of self-awareness, right? All so right, we'll take it away. Diving in, okay, so good afternoon to all our viewers, all our listeners, really, really happy to be here, happy to be continuing this program. I got a few messages um on whatsapp telling me thanks so much for the program how it impacted them you know the you know they're not called during the program but they'll send so we still appreciate that i appreciate it very much um i always appreciate feedback so what is self-awareness for those who won't hear last monday and probably haven't seen the videos yet the video yet sorry um self-awareness is one of the most important qualities necessary to have and sustain healthy relationships that is what i believe and i think many people who work with people also um hold that view i don't believe that any of us as i would have shared last program i'm a hundred percent self-aware so there are always things about ourselves and how we um may come over to people that we need to be um that we may not be aware of and therefore the importance of friends colleagues people giving us feedback you know about ourselves but also the word of god is very important being able to to look at ourselves through the eyes of the word of god and also allowing the holy spirit to convict us and to guide us you know sometimes you say something nobody tell you anything wrong or no, but you know that tone was wrong. Well, how I said that was wrong. I should not have shared that at that point in time. We know the Holy Spirit convicts us, right? And a lack of self-awareness causes a lot of conflicts, misunderstandings, and breakups in relationships. So self-awareness is the ability to see yourself clearly and objectively through reflection and introspection, right? through allowing feedback, not just dismissing what people have to say from time to time and even dismissing the word of God and the Holy Spirit. It includes, so self-awareness includes gaining an understanding of and insight into one's strengths, qualities, weaknesses, defects, ideas, thoughts, beliefs, ideals, responses, reactions, attitudes, emotions, and motivations. Self-awareness includes assessing how one is perceived by others and how others are impacted based on one's behavior, responses, and conduct. And this is not about people pleasing. This is about the fact that we need to be acting lovingly to one another. And sometimes our actions are not loving. It doesn't mean all loving actions feel good to people, but um, this is not about people pleasing. This is about our actions are helping people to grow and to become better and to, to face healthy consequences for actions, right? They're not harming and pulling down. And about relationship.com says it so nicely, and I quote, self-awareness is important in every If you are aware of how, of the things, sorry, if you are aware of the things you say and do, you will be able to recognize when your actions bother, hurt, or anger someone else. This may sound straightforward, but it takes some adults years 
before they understand what this concept means and how to apply to their life, end of quote. And in last Monday's program, I would have spoken um, from an article um, on two types or two areas of self-awareness, your internal self-awareness and external self-awareness. That's internal self-awareness and external self-awareness, and both are very important. And internal self-awareness, which is private self-awareness represents how you clearly, how you or how we clearly see our own values, passions, aspirations, our fit in the environment, in our environment, our reactions and our reactions would include things like our thoughts or feelings, behaviors, strengths, weaknesses, and the impact on others. So this is how we see it, right? We have found that, and this was this was the author, I'm talking about psychologists in their research, they have found that internal self-awareness is associated with higher job and relationship satisfaction, personal and social control, and happiness. And it is negatively related to anxiety, stress, and depression. And then there is the external self-awareness or public self-awareness, which means your understanding of how others view you, how others view us in terms of the same factors listed above. You know, your values, your passions, your aspirations, your fit in your environment, your reactions, right? And so, so the public self-awareness means this is how you understand how people see you. So there are people who see as, oh my God, she or he is such a show off. I really don't like having them around. Everything is just about them. And this person does not see that about themselves. So their external or their public self-awareness is very low. So that if we have to be considered aware or have a sense of healthy self-awareness, we must be strong in both areas, in both the private and the public self-awareness. So I um, listed 12 behaviors that indicate that you have a lack of self-awareness. And of course, this is not an exhaustive list. I don't think that these are all, but I think that these are ones that, that we would find most common um, in persons who lack self-awareness. So what are they? One, you feel everyone else is to blame for things. So something happened. It's never your fault. It's always someone else's fault. You are in denial. And I'll be expanding of, on these, of course. You show an inability to give and receive apologies. You are very passive aggressive. You do not actually understand why you act the way you do. Six, you are prone to emotional outbursts. Number seven, you do not adapt your behaviors. Number eight, you are surprised by people's reactions to you. Number nine, you get very defensive about feedback. Number 10, you overestimate your contributions. And going along with that, number 11, you underestimate the damage you cause. And number 12, you keep making the same mistakes. And I'm going to expand on these 12 um, behaviors. Now, one sure way to determine if you have an issue with self-awareness is that you feel everyone else is to blame for things. And, and in the next program, I want to be looking at some of the reasons why people have um, a lack of self-awareness. And of course, what you can do to improve your self-awareness. Because there was a time when my self-awareness wasn't that great. And I had even a little jealousy and thinking is the other person, the same as me, not feeling good about myself. And therefore I get jealous with people. And, you know, I had my good passive aggressive, you know? So instead of telling people things, I would act in ways to, you know, punch little jabs or, um, I remember with Huey getting up 
well, he he he's not a, a morning person. So, you know, back in the day, he, he getting up on a Saturday late and I getting up early and I vex. And I'm not realizing that, listen, this is more about me than him. And I'm making so much noise. Eh? I'm washing up them ways. I'm banging up everything. I'm moving that washing machine. We had a twin tub. I don't know if how many of you all know about the twin tub washing machine. And I have to move it. And if you know noise, I'm making moving that, right? Because I'm vexed. And I, I just wouldn't I just wouldn't say anything, you know. He must see. So real passive aggressive. If I not sleeping, you not sleeping. What are you doing sleeping? <laughs> right? Those are things that really indicate a lack of self-awareness and other things. And so thankful to say I have grown, I've grown, I've grown. And I always say to people, if I could grow, you could grow too, right? We're not that different. And I think very important when we're looking at self-awareness is to understand that we are all priceless. We are all priceless. Our worth is not based on what we do or don't do, getting it right or not getting it right. It's based on the fact that we're created in the image and likeness of God and God has assigned word to us. And that word is that we are priceless and then being able to move from there. So one sure way to determine if you have an issue with self-awareness is that you feel everyone else is to blame. So you are unaware that you've been making nasty comments to your adult daughter. Your daughter asks you to please stop and you become irritated with her for accusing you. Without reflecting at all, you ramp up your negative jabs until you say a few horrible things that of course you can't take back. Your daughter becomes hurt and says she would not see you again unless you stop. You blame her. So you blame your daughter and you tell others you don't understand what has gotten into your daughter and that out of nowhere, she has threatened to never see you again. You do not see your part in the issue. So you've been told that you have a short promotion coming up. You have a promotion at work and you, this is who you are. You naturally bring it up to all your friends. So you're telling all your friends about this upcoming promotion, which you're very happy for. You're very grateful for. At a friend's birthday dinner, you talk loudly about your promotion through dinner and while your friend is opening gifts. When your friend tries to change the subject, you assume she must be jealous. And we can see how <laughs> self-awareness, a lack of self-awareness. In each of these examples, what is missing is self-reflection. Do some soul searching to determine if you could be more self-aware, more aware. Self-reflection is criti critical for greater self-awareness. It is not always somebody else's fault. It is not always that you did everything the way you should do it. Self-awareness is a continual process. The more you do it, the better you will be at determining how the way you think and act affects your own life and your relationships with others. Secondly, a lack of um, self-awareness is shown up in you being in denial. Saying one thing, but acting and behaving differently. So you could talk a good talk, but your behaviors don't show the, those things you're talking about. You do not realize that your behavior is the driving force, which is creating conflict with others. When you lack self-awareness of your behavior and its impact on others, you are unable to make positive changes. So you're in denial because you're talking a good talk, but your behavior is saying something else. We are great as human beings. We are great at inventing what seems to us to be logical reasons for what we do and to cover up things that we are often scared to deal with. However, constant denial will not only create toxic 
interpersonal relationships, but often lead to personal burnout because of the underlying stress that the stress that you fail to recognize. Now, let me say something about being a denial. A lot of times how we protect ourselves also is by simply thinking about our intentions. So you are act, you, you're talking a good talk, but you're acting very differently. And when people say something to you, you say, but that was my intention. And while intentions are important, we need to understand what is hurting the persons around us, are our behaviors. So I cannot just look at my intentions, which may be wonderful, which may be good. I need to look at my behaviors because what is hurting the people around us are our behaviors. The third one, you make excuses and get defensive. So people who lack self-awareness tend to be very defensive, right? In your mind, you know you are right. And there is a perfectly good reason why you are right. And everyone else just does not get it. And when I hear people, especially in relationships, um, I know I'm right. And if she would just listen to me, she would be okay. I know I'm right. And if he would just listen to me, he would be okay. They just don't get it. A lot of times they may not realize that, but that is an indication of a lack of self-awareness. Or, and in that you're acting defensively. People who are acting defensively are essentially trying to protect themselves from feeling a certain feeling uncomfortable, right? A certain amount of, 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 of just discomfort or from viewing themselves as having failed. So I can't hear this, right? You have to agree because if I do agree, that means I'm not right. Then I failed or, or seeing themselves in some type of negative light. They tend to focus a lot on the intentions, right? Again, which may be good, but they're not realizing the behaviors hurting others. Also, they don't want to really face that their behaviors are off because it, for them, their identity isn't getting it right or in being good. And saying that your behavior hurts someone may just make them feel like I'm a failure or I'm not good enough. And they cannot deal with that. Unfortunately, you are missing opportunities to explore options that may have great benefits to you and others. And so this is when you, you just make excuses or you get defenses, defensive. Over time, this response of making excuses or being defensive soon becomes an ingrained habit that is hard to break and it really holds you back from growing. And of course, it causes you to have very unhealthy relationships. And sometimes people just don't even want to deal with you, don't even feel it makes sense talking to you about issues. They just know you're going to get defensive, you might gaslight, you know. So I'm not even bothering to tell her anything. I'm not even bothering to tell him it anything and therefore you're not growing third another indication of a lack of self-awareness is an inability to give and receive apologies when someone apologizes they may not accept it at all so the person who is is dealing with a lack of self-awareness someone apologizes to them and they don't accept it or Believe that the person needs to keep on apologizing. That wasn't enough. What they said wasn't enough. They do not understand what it means to truly accept someone's apology and move on. And as a result, they continually harm the relationship by bringing up arguments. On the other hand, they rarely apologize when they should. And if they do so, it is a non-apology apology, right? Instead of genuinely acknowledging how you acted and how the behaviors impacted others, impacted your loved ones, you almost like, yeah, sorry, but, you know, those non-apology apologies, they do not see their own need for forgiveness and their need to apologize. 
So as a, for them, they are okay. They haven't done anything that big. Their focus stays on what someone else did instead of their own contribution to the argument or the pain in the relationship. Number four, you are very passive aggressive. Now, this is a behavior style that reflects from the issue that or the issues that are bothering you and that you do not have the will or the ability to confront. This is where you are indirectly aggressive and you express your hostility in ways designed to hurt and confuse the target without saying or expressing what you are really upset about. So I'm really upset about the fact that you did not bring bread home um, last night. And instead of just saying that, I throw cornflakes, which you do not like, in your lunch container. I pack that in your lunch bag and I give you that to carry. Now you thinking, you forget about bread and have bread and you looking for your sandwich when you open your, 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 your lunch bowl and you see cornflakes and what? And when you call, you know, babes, to be honest, when I got up, I realized I didn't have any bread. So I said, I still want to give you something. So I felt, I know, I know cornflakes is okay. So, and you notice I pack a little bit of milk there for you to put on it too. This time I know you don't like cornflakes. You know? And I saw a nice, nice, nice talking to you, right? Oh, I forgot to buy you bread. Yes, yes, you did. Yes, you did. So if you can buy bread when you're coming home later and I'm cracking up there because I know you're not going to eat that cornflakes. That's passive aggressive behavior, right? You might not even know what the problem is sometimes. Something bought in here and you don't even so you don't have the awareness, so you don't even know what the problem is. You just want to avoid anything near it altogether. So you do so. What you do, right, is that you show your anger at something else or try to hurt the person in some way without saying what is bothering you. And and that shows. I mean, it shows some other things too. Some people really don't like to deal with conflict, but it could also show a lack of self-awareness. Number five, you do not actually understand why you act the way you do. So there is a lack of understanding about why you act the way you do. Um, so how well do you understand your emotions, your actions, your behavior? So that people who lack self-awareness often feel constantly out of whack, or anxious or angry, right? They usually cannot even pinpoint what really upsets them half of the time. Number six, you are prone to emotional outbursts. Emotional outbursts happen for a wide range of reasons, most of which involve a lack of self-control and a lack of self-awareness. For most part, People who are emotionally intelligent, aware of how they're feeling, are able to control themselves and understand their emotions. So I know if I'm getting angry, if I'm feeling angry, and I know what to do so that I don't reach a place where I say and do things that are harmful to my relationships. It wasn't always like that. Um, but of course, you get better because you become aware. When we do not have much self-awareness, you can't figure out why you feel the way you do or you do not realize how you truly feel. You are acting in response to your feelings and you don't even know it. You may not realize what the consequences of your outburst can be. So you're not even aware that, look, if I react like this, this is what could happen. And sometimes you don't even care. Number seven. You do not adapt your behavior. So people who lack self-awareness use the same approach repeatedly without tailoring it to different individuals or situations and modifying it based on the results. We, people are different. 
what I may be able to say to one person in a particular way, I may not be able to say it to another person. Some people are more sensitive to words or affected by certain actions. And especially if I'm in intimate relationships with people, it's important to be aware of that. And a person who lacks self-awareness will be the same way with everyone. They, they're always talking loud, no matter what environment they're in, they're just talking loud. They, they're just being harsh. It doesn't matter. And they leave a road of pain behind them, right? So they leave and everybody, they're just feeling, oh my God, what just happened? And somebody says, that's how they always behave, you know? Doesn't matter where he goes, he's the same way. It just doesn't matter. That's a person who lacks self-awareness. Number eight, you are surprised by people's reactions. Low self-aware individuals are more focused on their intent. So my intention than the impact of their behaviors on others. So when someone gets frustrated with them or somebody gets angry about their behaviors, they cannot understand why, right? Or sometimes they're really surprised by the person's reaction. You understand why she gets on like that when I said that? And of course, the person they're thinking, yes, I understand. Did you realize what you just said? You, you understand why he, 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 he just ups and walk away because I said, yes, and I probably may have done the same thing, right? So they a person who lack in self-awareness. So be, a lot of times because their intent is good, they don't mean to, let's say, hurt a person, offend a person, but they're not that public awareness of how my behaviors are impacting others. It is not there. And sometimes because they have strong defenses, so they have the denial and they have the being very defensive, they People try to talk to them and they will not hear. A lot of times they can see it as somebody's judging them. When this is not about judgment, this is simply me trying to say, this is how your behaviors impact others. Number nine, right, which kind of feeding off of what I just said, you get defensive about feedback. People who are not aware of their faults People, sorry, people who are aware of their faults often respond to negative feedback with, oh no, oh gosh, sorry, I did it again. Oh my goodness, oh gosh. Yes, I'm working on that. I'm working on that. I'm getting better because they are aware. They are aware of where, you know, they're lacking, where they, where they, they mess up at times, where they, you know, could cause pain to others. So, oh gosh, sorry, 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 sorry. Eh? Um, I'll do better next time. I'm working on that. Oh gosh, I did it again. Oh gosh, sorry, sorry. But someone, when someone lacks self-awareness, negative feedback a lot of times triggers a more emotional or angry reaction. Almost like they have no idea why you would say that. Or sometimes they even act like if you're attacking them, which is not what is happening. Number 10, you overestimate your contribution. So persons who lack self-awareness, right? They are not tuned into, of course, their impact on, um, on others, how their behaviors impact others. And a lot of times it is easy for them to overestimate the positive impact that you're making. So persons with low self-awareness, um, whether they are our team members or wherever they are, often think that they are more of a gift to their team or to their family or to the relationship than they are. And, you know, it's like, I know, you know, if, if I wasn't here, these things wouldn't be happening. And somebody thinking, yeah, these bad things wouldn't be happening, right? Because they are not aware of how their behaviors are impacting others. And as a result of that, you underestimate the damage you cause. So you have low self-awareness and you're overestimating your contribution, but you are underplaying the ne negative impact of your behavior. 
And number 12, you keep making the same mistakes. And this may result from arrogance, right? Because you just believe that you know a person, they may, may believe that they know everything, they can do everything right. Or even if they, they know they don't know everything, they believe that they know most things and they do most things right, right? Or there is an unwillingness to take advice or to accept feedback. They do not take the lessons learned from their mistakes because they do not stop to assess and reflect why things went wrong. Or as I started off with the first one, they think it's everybody else's fault. And so they're not learning from their mistakes. And we have to realize when we make mistakes, it is important for us to reflect. When we have failures, when we have sinned, it is important for us to reflect. What have I learned about myself? What have I learned about people, about life, about God? It's important to reflect because when we don't reflect, we make the same mistake over and over and over. I remember in sixth form when I first did A-levels, I did not pass any. And that was very painful and I felt very depressed. And I remember a number of things was happening. Mommy was in the country. My granny who lived with us got very ill and I was a main person helping to take care of her at that time. And so much was going on. A lot was going on, right? And I mean, went to God in tears, you know, God, you know, why did this happen to me? And of course, expecting God to say some wonderful thing. And, and really what I felt the Holy Spirit was saying is that Petri's, you lack discipline and you don't know enough. <gasps> That's what I heard. And that if I, I mean, the Holy Spirit helped me to see that. And when I reflected, I realized that that was true. And you know what I did? I spoke to a friend and I paid a friend to give me lessons. My dad would give me money to travel to school. And school was walking distance, but it's a good walk. It's a long walk. And I would take the long walk and I took that money and I paid a, a friend to teach me and um, became a little more disciplined. And when I went back, I passed all. So the, my situation didn't change. The things that were happening in school and even at home did not change. But who changed? I changed. I change. So if persons who lack self-awareness, they keep on making the same mistakes. A lot of times because it's always somebody else's fault and they are not spending time to reflect. It's not them. They're not, and sometimes not accepting the feedback they're getting from others about what is happening. Now, I'm going to close with a story about racial. And Rachel, this is no one that I know. So if this sounds like you, no, I'm not speaking about you. And if your name is Rachel, no, I'm not speaking about you, Rachel. This is a story I made up, right? And this is not about anyone I know. And I, I don't know why Rachel came into my head and I gave her the name Rachel. So Rachel is a bright and beautiful woman. She has two degrees a good job, people seem to like her, and she loves Jesus. Yet her intimate relationships with her spouse and parents are strained and she hardly seems to enjoy life anymore. Her first thought and solution for her problem is that if her husband spent more time with her, she would be better. Rachel believes that someone else is responsible for her happiness. But she understands that he is working and studying at this time, so she would not fuss about it. Rachel is repressing what she truly feels. She just tries not to think about her life, but from time to time, she would lash out at her husband if he did not wash his dishes or left his shoes in the living room, her husband feels disrespected and unappreciated. Rachel does not understand why her husband takes it so personally because this is how she speaks when she's upset. And those seemingly little things make her upset. Rachel is minimizing her behavior 
blaming her husband for her lashing out and being passive aggressive with him. When her husband tries to point out things she can do to work on herself, she herself and feel better, she gets defensive and makes excuses. Rachel is defensive. Rachel's mom would call most times to complain about her life. Rachel does not like these conversations, especially when her mom shares her dislike for Rachel's dad. But she just listens. And when the call has ended, she would go looking for some snacks to eat and try to relax. She listens because she just wants her mom to be happy. Rachel is unaware, is unable, sorry, to share how she really feels. She's unable to set healthy boundaries and she feels responsible for making her mom happy as she knows her mom has had a hard life and made many sacrifices for them. Now, Rachel is the third of four children. Her parents always seem to have, so this is a little big backdrop on Rachel, because I'll be bringing back Rachel when we're looking at um, becoming more self-aware. So Rachel, she's the third of four children. Her parents always seem to have problems in their relationship and would take out a lot of their anger on the first child. As a result, Rachel tried to be good, behave good, study hard, etc. If she had a problem, she tried to deal with it on her own as she felt her mom was always dealing with so much and her dad, of course, was very busy working very hard. When she did share, she was told that she was just being ungrateful, overreacting or too sensitive. She learned that her feelings and needs were not important. She feels like her parents did their best based on where they came from. But she looked forward to the day when she would be old enough to have enough money to move out of home. Now, in her own home and with her own family, the peace and happiness she felt she would have still eludes her. Because of her experiences growing up, Risha learned how to express, how to repress and not be in touch with her feelings. Also asking for help was not helpful. These factors strongly contributed to Risha's lack of self-awareness. So in my next program, I want to look at some of the causes for a lack of self-awareness and how to improve our self-awareness. So I hope this was very helpful and just going over those behaviors that indicate a lack of self-awareness. You feel everyone else is to blame. You're in denial. So you have a good talk, you know, but your behavior is not matching up with that talk. You show an inability to give and receive apologies. You are very passive aggressive. You do not actually understand why you act the way you do. You are prone to emotional outbursts. You do not adapt your behaviors to various relationships, situations, circumstances. You are surprised by people's reactions to you. You get very defensive about feedback. You overestimate your contribution and you underestimate the damage that you cause and you keep making the same mistakes, right? So self-awareness, so, so, so important. New series with uh, Patrice Coffey. Thank you so very much, Patrice. I'm seeing we have some time. Um, I'm gonna open up the phone lines in case if anyone would like to call, if they have any questions at all. I'll sure. give them three minutes on the clock. So guys, if you're listening and you're locked on, you are listening to Counselor and Trainer Patrice Coffey's Self-Awareness Part 2. What behaviors indicate a lack of self-awareness? If you have any questions at all, this is your opportunity. You can call us now, 622-1981, 628-1981. Or you can send a WhatsApp at 275-1981. Patrice, I'm seeing... <laughs> 
Well, let's see, I sent, uh, all right, so I'm seeing someone calling. Uh, good afternoon, you're on the air. So, I have a question. Um, if someone identifies with some of those traits, well, some traits, but not yeah. all, um, yeah. how do you verify if you're just, like, truly not self-aware? Or if you are, or, you know, like, probably have, like, four or five of those traits, if, if you think you are not self-aware, what can you do? To improve. Where right. so, do you yeah. find Good. resources? Right. So that's what that's my next program. My next program is looking at things to do to become more self-aware. So I'd encourage you to listen to the next program. But um I am glad for the question because as I said, nobody's a hundred percent self-aware. It is a journey, and we are constantly we are working on it, not in some kind of um, like a, a a teacher over here beating you up. It's just part of our growth and growing from glory to glory, becoming more like Christ. And so that, yes, if I identify two, three, four, we know, okay, I want to work on this area. So one of the things I identified with me, even as I continue to work is like, sometimes I would have fears and I wouldn't know where they're coming from. So I found what helped me, and we'll be talking about this in our next program, journaling, really just, just thinking about it deeper. And a lot of times to think about it deeper, journaling helps me. But um, I remember being very defensive. And as I said, Huey pointed that out to me and really looking into that. So nobody's 100% used. Uh -huh. The person is still there? Yeah. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Like the environment you are in, like for example, if this, if my mom is that way as well, right? And so, like, I wouldn't think that it's abnormal for these type of responses from myself. But then being in a different environment, I realize very oh, good. Myself, I yes. should be concerned about someone else. So, like, you realize then, like, not every yes. scenario to identify with the majority of you know what's happening. It might also be kind of hard to break the cycle if you grew up in that environment. So I was kind of wondering, I, yeah. like, how do I continuously assess myself? But like you said, doing it all health. So thank you so much. You're welcome. But listen, listen next week because most of us become like this. And you're right, because of the environments that we grew up in. And so there are people who don't even see quarreling and arguing. And, and this is not about self-awareness as something wrong because they grew up in that environment so so yeah so i think all of us can work on our self-awareness so thanks so much for sharing that thank you so very much caller all right guys uh thanks for that call uh, sister alicia always has a compliment to send to you Patrick. <laughs> right. she also said yes. i need to like the treat <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you so very much alicia well, it's 1 p.m. Patrice, I want to say thank you so very much. Uh, if you guys are listening and you have any questions for Patrice, the WhatsApp number is still available, 329-7383. It's a WhatsApp number. You can send your messages directly to Patrice. And You're putting so me in trouble, much. I don't know. No, ask your questions <laughs> on, during the program. <laughs> and, and, and thank you for all the comments coming in after. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Don't forget, you can find these um, on uh, FBN TV. That's on uh, YouTube. And of course, it's uh, live now on Isaac the Promise. So I'll put that one on YouTube uh, during this week. Be sure mm -hmm. you can get it there. And you can, of course, uh, share the link with someone. All right. And if you missed out, you can go back and review. All right. So Patrice, thank you so very much once You're again. welcome. God bless you. And we God look forward to you. another session. Uh, yes. next Monday please God and um, until we meet meet again all right great bye bye you. okay bye bye